We've tried every alternative to Google Sheets, except for one. I got a piece of mail in my mailbox the other day. It's what we're going to be looking at right now. It's called VisiCalc. So I took it inside, I opened up the box. I put it in my computer and I realized I need some help learning how to use it. So I called my friend Andrew. Andrew. Thanks, Adam. Have you installed VisiCalc yourself? Yeah, I tried to run it and I put that disk into my laptop and it didn't do anything. But I've heard that you have a way to run it. I'll put a link in the description to your, your uh, uh, program that you're running. But if you could show us how you do it, that would be great. Sure thing, Adam. Here, I'll uh, share my screen so we can both see what's going on. Uh, can you see my screen? I can. So when you install VisiCalc, have you installed VisiCalc already? You go up to the VisiCalc menu and you click install VisiCalc. And you're going to get your serial number. You're going to have to write that down. This is a very valuable item. This you got to keep it in a safe place. Yeah, I got it. I, me I memorized that. So when you're using VisiCalc, you have to sort of throw away all of the things you remember about Google Sheets. Is that going to be hard or easy for you? That's going to be really hard because that's what I know as a spreadsheet. So I don't even know where to start with this. So maybe a good place to start is the user guide here uh, that I wrote, VisiCalc. Um, it, it helps you go st start up and get started pretty quick. Just have to read a few pages here. Okay, and that'll be in the app if I, if I get it from the link. Yeah, you can read the user guide inside VisiCalc. And then we also have a very helpful reference sheet for all the commands you can do. Uh, instead of using your mouse and uh, getting something like carpal tunnel, you know, that's very uh, common in our, in our field, you're going to be using a series of commands, and those commands can be put into the command line here uh, next to the word command. And if you want to move around, you're going to use the greater than sign, and you're going to type in which cell you want to go to. Ooh, well, that's different. If you want to enter any sort of words or anything in here, you have to go to the black line underneath this command line. So we can go to B1, and if we want to change B1 to, say, just the word NO with a dot, we just type that into here, this black line, and hit enter and it will change it over here. No need to do lowercase or uppercase, it'll all be uppercase. Don't have to worry about casing at all. Yeah, maybe we can throw away the bottom borders too because what's happening in, in your second row there? Yeah, those are just very simple borders of about to, to separate your header. Can you tell me about some of the other ways that this is better than Google Sheets because already it's, it's seeming easier to use. Yeah, it's easier and simpler. You only have five columns to deal with. No more of this sort of 10 million cell limit. Uh, you only have five columns and 25 rows. If you do try to uh, add a column or add a row, it will stop you and it'll delete it. This is so much uh, easier and simpler to use. You don't have to deal with adding any rows or deleting any rows. It's all there for you. Yeah, I mean, who would need 100 rows? Totally gets in the way. Know. Yeah. There are some crazy people out there. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to go back to A1, which is the home cell, uh, you just have to type in the command H O M E, home, and that'll bring you back to A1. If you want, again, if you want to go to any cell, just do the greater than sign, sort of like an arrow. You can type in D1 and go there. We have some other uh, options here uh, that I don't think are part of Google Sheets. You know, one of the most costliest things if you, is if you lose your place or you lose your data. Uh, you can hit uh, slash S for save, and this will save a copy of your uh, tab or your sheet. 
Ah. It will save a copy of your sheet uh, right here, and your work will be saved. Uh, you can also do slash P for print. If you want a PDF copy of this, it will save it to your Google Drive that's already connected to Google Sheets. But uh, very easy slash P to be able to print a PDF copy of your sheet. All that without going to the menus. Exactly. Yeah. Much, much less stress on your hand to move up to file, uh, download, and click over here on PDF. And it's also, it won't cost you any storage on your own device. This will be all in the Google Cloud. If you've lost your mouse, you should definitely install VisiCalc because Google Sheets is virtually unusable, but, but VisiCalc is usable. Perfect without a mouse. Uh, it is one of the best software on the market without a mouse. Yeah. Andrew, you know what I got really confused about the other day when I was using a Google Sheets is that there were so many number formats. Why do you need to format something you know, with commas or no commas, how many decimal places? I really hope that VisiCalc does that better. Yeah, it's so much better, so much simpler. Uh, there's only uh, two options of formatting. You know, I don't understand people when they want to format in so many different ways and so many different styles. Uh, you have dollars, which is monetary styling, and then you have percentage. That is it. You can only, and then also plain text, of course, but everybody knows that. You can format anything in plain text. It's the default format. But yeah, if you need something else, you have percent and you have dollars and cents. What would you say has more upside for society as far as uh, time saved, chat GPT or, or VisiCalc? Yeah, for time saved, you know, I have not found any time savings with ChatGPT yet. I've only found that I have 10x more time, or I spend 10x more time in ChatGPT trying to do more, trying to figure out what it's doing, whereas VisiCalc uh, doesn't do anything on the back end. It is what it is. It is it shows me everything I have available and shows me what I can do right away. It's very intuitive, much more intuitive than just sort of a chat with, uh, with an AI, some sort of, you know, c custom AI, or is it custom? Is it, is it personalized? Is it, does everybody have the same AI? I don't know. This physical, everyone has the same one. They, everybody has the same five columns and 25 rows. Uh, you can, there is one way to personalize VisiCalc which I can explain to you now if you'd like. Please do. So if you go up to the VisiCalc menu and you go to settings, you can change the color if you want. Mm. I don't know why anyone would want to, but we have made available that you can set the color to white or green. But also, you know, this is actually very, uh, this was sort of a fight with the uh, development uh, community here. Uh, we do offer that you can change the color to any hex code you want. Oh. If you happen to know the hex code, uh, you know, something like this, you can change it to any color you want. I don't know if you saw the subtle difference, but it made it a little uh, darker. Uh, but you can, I don't know why anyone w would want anything other than the green color that we have shipped with default uh, VisiCalc. I even don't want to bring it up, but the other popular spreadsheet software is Lotus123. If you were to rank them, I, I, I mean, obviously Google Sheets is at the bottom after seeing this. So VisiCalc, though, of those three, is it number one or number number two? Because Lotus123, don't forget, introduced the concept that you could start a formula with a plus sign. So if you have a 10 key, you don't even have to move your hand. Yeah, so even if uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3 has literally the numbers 1, 2, and 3 in it, it doesn't mean that it's number 1, number 2, and number 3. What's interesting about Lotus 1, 2, 3 that I find is that Lotus 1, 2, 3 is backwards compatible with VisiCalc. So that means everything you can do in VisiCalc you can do in Lotus 1, 2, 3. There must have been something really righteously awesome about this, uh, about VisiCalc. So I would put VisiCalc number 1, definitely. Maybe even number zero. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously, VisiCalc is probably the pinnacle of your career because it's hard to get much better than that. But what's next for you, Andrew? Next for me would be VisiCalc 2024. 
uh, rolling out some new interfaces, some new pre-installed colors. Uh, I think, I, you know, I don't know anyone else who's going to use other than green, but, you know, f from user feedback, we will be more than happy to pre-install more colors as people want, uh, as more people give us more feedback of which hex codes they want. We will also be capturing yeah. all the data of what hex code people use, and we'll try to personalize, you know, that VisiCalc experience around the hex code or the color that you're using. Um, so we'll see, you know, of all the users, which hex codes are the most used. But, you know, I think green is going to be the – green's the color of spreadsheets, right? Yeah, and does it support the Apple Pencil? Thank God it does not. It does not support the Apple Pencil. Good. Yeah, because that, that would just get in the way. Absolutely. A totally different interface and very unintuitive. Well, Andrew, where can we find you when we have a follow-up uh, you know, feature request for VisiCalc? Yeah, we're taking uh, all types of uh, inputs. Uh, just, you know, put a little piece of, write down your problem on a little piece of paper, put it in a bottle, throw it in the ocean, and it'll get to me. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I mean, so, so if you, one of the good things about the row limitation too is that when the dot matrix printer is going, you know, in those little holes on the side that you have to rip off and it gets hard when there's a lot of sheets of paper, you can't go over one page because there's only 25 rows. So you, you, that's a non-issue. Absolutely non-issue. You can't even increase the size in any way possible. You know, can't make it 200%, 300%. It's 100% all the time. No worries on figuring out, should I make this 50% to fit on the page? Uh, completely intuitive. It is 100% all the time. Yep. That's Andrew Camphrey for you guys. There's no R. In. There's no R. Camphrey. Not Camphrey. He changed his name. It's Camphrey.